Mr. Speaker, yesterday I watched in the social media the Deputy President carrying a bag in the streets of Jomo Kenyatta. What struck me, Mr. Speaker, in that episode, as somebody who has traveled a lot, is the kind of bag the Deputy President was carrying. That one really struck me. That the kind of bag is not for the Deputy President. That bag is for something else. Another thing that struck me in that episode is what was the content of that bag? Because the Deputy President could not even give it to his bodyguard. He had to hold it himself in person with the Speaker. What, what could have contained that bag with the Speaker? I don't know whether a committee of this parliament can get to know for us. What is the content of that bag that you cannot even trust with Ngunjiri Wambu was behind him that he held for me this bag, Mr. Speaker? I don't know whether it is. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Speaker, those are the two things that struck me in yesterday's episode politically. But having said that, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, why are we discussing this matter here? The only place that can hold the presidency accountable is Parliament, Mr. Speaker. They are held accountable here, constitutionally. You know, Mr. Speaker, you can hold somebody accountable in the sense that if it is your responsibility to dismiss him from the job he has, then you are the only one who can hold him accountable. It is a pro clear provision in the Constitution that this is the house that can remove anybody who occupies those offices, Mr. Speaker, and you are a senior lawyer. Mr. Speaker, if what I am seeing, or this trend I am seeing continues, you know very well, Mr. Speaker, the Constitution says a lead, a state officer, must, must bring honor, dignity, and respect to the office he's holding. You cannot demean the office you are holding and you expect to attract dignity and respect, Mr. Speaker. Let's call a spade a spade. If you want to politic, that is fine. If you want to go and talk in a church, in a public uh, burial place, that is fine. But not to the extent of demeaning the office of, of the Deputy President. Even the office of Member of Parliament cannot be demeaned, Mr. Speaker. When some of our colleagues misbehave, we take offense. When some of our colleagues here go to burials and behave in a manner that is unbecoming, a manner that a member of parliament should not behave, we take offense. We say, no, we talk to them, don't behave that way. As a whip, I guide them in my office. You can't behave like this. I don't know whether the executive has a whip. The whip of the executive now must come in. I don't know whether it's the majority leader who is the, who is the whip of the executive. But a majority leader, if somebody is not interested in any job, there are Kenyans who are interested in that job, Bana. Why don't you do something? We are here to execute it. There are many Kenyans who can perform. Men and women. And many Kenyans, men and women of high standard and caliber. Including, no, I don't qualify because I'm not from Kenya Kwanza. But anybody else is qualified. Mr. Speaker, you know, Mr. Speaker, they are the deputy presidency is a very, very critical office. In our neighboring country, the president today who's running that country is, was a deputy president. She was a deputy president of President Makovuli. And today she's a president of the Republic of Tanzania. So that tells you how important that office. That is not the kind of office that can be occupied by somebody who's pulling a trolley in the, in the corridors of Jomo Kenyatta Airport. It's not possible. So, Mr. Speaker, why we are talking as a parliament? Because it is here that we discuss matters of concern to the people. And surely, Deputy President pulling a trolley is of matters of concern to the public. The, the discussion here is why did he use uh, the Kenya Airways, the public transport? That is neither here nor there. The issue is pulling a trolley. The issue here is are we as a country, uh, giving the presidency the kind of respect that it deserves, Mr. Speaker. And I'm not absolving blame from anybody. Anybody who has not done his work, he can be held accountable. But Mr. Speaker, let me conclude by saying this. Mr. Speaker, people take these offices casually. And somebody thinks that if I become a deputy president, I cannot be held accountable by anybody. A member of parliament will hold you accountable. And the Constitution has given him that provision to hold you accountable. Any member of parliament, by the way, it doesn't matter whether you're Kenya Kwanza or Azimio, any member of parliament can hold you accountable for actions and anything that you speak. 
I don't want to digress because the speaker has told, let's concentrate on the context. But some of the utterances even are wanting. So Mr. Speaker, personally as a member of parliament, and you know some of us, we might not have become deputy presidents, or we may not become uh, occupied high officers, but now we are senior members of the, of the country because some of those people, we have served more terms of parliament than them. They know that. I have been in this parliament more than uh, those people. They know themselves. I don't want to mention names. I am now serving the third term, and people came here one term, and Suji, you are talk about it, you are talking about it, and you are talking about it, and you are talking about it. So, Mr. Speaker, I want, to, uh, I want to say this, that uh, let us respect the offices we are holding. If you have grievances, pro, 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 deal with your grievances in a manner that befits the office you are holding, and don't bring shame to the country. Don't bring shame to our country. And when you want to divide the country and you want to separate people, nobody will accept that. Nobody will allow that. With those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I want to say, please, please, for those people who are very close friends of our friend, please buy him another bag. That bag cannot go on. If next trip, I want to see a better bag. KJ, please. Thank you very much. Majority leader. It is not unusual. I think the only unusual thing that happened yesterday, Honorable Speaker, and maybe that may have uh, gotten the attention of the Honorable Jared Okello, was the Deputy President towing a bag, a new bag, brand new bag, as uh, the Honorable Junet says, that could not even fit into the uh, compartments in the aeroplane, uh, towing the bag and posing for a photograph. But unfortunately, I think, Honorable Speaker, on matters touching on security, the Deputy President was also very well secured yesterday, and I can confirm that to the country. He had with him not less than 19 bodyguards, 14 of whom he was to travel with on that aircraft. Therefore, he had no problems with people to carry his bags. Let nobody think that the Deputy President had problems on people to carry his bags. He had not less than three Photographers to Mr. take Junaid, the photographs on the speaker. Majority. Yes, Junaid, what's the point of order? Mr. Speaker, I wish to ask the majority leader whether he's correctly saying that a plane that was to carry 60 people, 14 were supposed to be bodyguards of the deputy president in that plane. Can you tell the, the parliament in broad daylight that 14 were members of his security detail out of 60 members, that third of the plane? And cameramen and the other things. Honorable Speaker, the information I have, the Deputy President did not just appear for the photograph. The Deputy President was driven to the airside with his full security detail, including the presidential guards that guard him from the record squad. They were there with him. There were adequate, not less than 14 officers traveling with him on that plane including photographers, security men, bloggers, protocol people, including the former MP Fonieri, who I hear is a chief blogger in that office now, Honorable Speaker. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, I was just making the point that the Deputy President was not short of staff and personnel to carry his bags, uh, including photographers who are taking those photos, Honorable Speaker, and therefore his security was not in question at all.